Come on. But nonetheless, so he said, cry aloud. He said, spare not. He said, show my people. You got to show people exactly what they're doing. I'm going to get this book. I'm going to bring it into 2020, and I'm going to show you exactly where you are. People say this ain't a relevant book. I say you're wrong. This book is very relevant, and it's our job as a preacher to expound this book, to open this book, to preach all the counsel of God, and to show them right here in the literal text, here you are, 2020. Mark her down. Amen. But anyways, all right, so... Show my people. Go over to Psalms real quick. Psalms. So we got Isaiah. We got Luke writing for Paul here. And then we're going to look at a little fellow by the name of David. Psalm chapter number 40. Psalm 40. Psalm 40. Hope I'm making sense for some of you. Uh, Acts chapter 20 said, all the counsel of God. All right, let's look at it. Psalm chapter 40 and verse number 9. David here, I have preached. There he is again. He's a preacher of righteousness, and we ought to be a preacher of righteousness. He preached in the uh, righteousness in the great congregation. That's what we're doing here today. You ought to come up here and preach righteousness. Not your opinion, not your ideas, not your denomination, not your creed, not what so-and-so is doing over there on the internet. You ought to preach righteousness. Nonetheless, in the great congregation, that's what we're doing. So David says, I have not refrained. You know what refrain, when you refrain, you know what it is? It's to hold back. You remember Paul said, I kept back. You remember Isaiah said, spare not. Now David is saying, I have not refrained. That means I have not held back. Get in some of these churches and some of these preachers get in the pulpit, they're half cocked. I don't like a guy that's half cocked. Either go all the way or get out of the way. Amen and amen. And so, listen, like Brother Reuben said, you guys want to get up here and, oh, we Brother, are we going to pray before we go out? You ought to have been prayed up well before you ever touch boots on the ground. Amen and amen. Brother, I forgot this, and I, I forgot that, and I need my jacket because it's chilly. I say you're half cocked. Either get all the way in or get all the way out. That's right. One or the other. David said, I've not refrained my lips. Oh, Lord, thou knowest, and the Lord does know, right. and the Lord does have records. Yeah. And I thank God today that I'm, not a, uh, I'm accountable to God above who will judge every idle word. Right. You say, well, I don't like what you said. Tough. <laughs> Tough. Amen. Amen. Your wife gets to tell you whatever she wants, and you don't have any problem with that. Bless God Almighty. But a preacher get in the pulpit and come rip your face off, and I got a problem with that. Preacher get on the horn and rip the face off a sinner, and well, I got a problem with that. Oh boy. Oh, but you go home and mama gets to Whoa. mama gets to boss around and tell you, hurry up and get off your bed and go to Walmart. Oh, yeah. I don't like that, amen. I don't like a woman telling a man what to do. Breathe in and breathe out. I knew I'd lose you right there, but I'm preaching. <laughs> Amen. All right, so anyways, where am I? Psalm 40, I'm about to go off the rails. And uh, oh I didn't take my medicine this morning, as you can tell. Uh-oh. Sleepy Joe. Anyway, Psalm chapter 40. He said, I'm not refrained, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. There it is again. What does hid mean? It means to conceal. When you're showing my people, I'm showing you something. Or I'm hiding something. I'm concealing something. You see here, David is saying the same thing Isaiah said, the same thing Paul said. He said, if you're going to preach all the counsel of God, you're not going to keep back things. You're going to show the people everything. You're going to make it real bare and real transparent. You say, why do you like Trump? Because he tells it like it is. Amen and amen. And I'm not preaching politics. I'm just glad to have somebody in the White House that tells it like it is. Amen. I didn't say he was Jesus Christ. Trust me. 
But nonetheless, the man tells it like it is. Yeah. Amen. People don't like it. So anyways, David said, I've not refrained. I've not hid. That means he did not conceal. The opposite of conceal is to show. Yes. Go over to 2 Timothy. I know I lost half of you about that woman comment. <laughs> Amen. I've been married almost 15 years, so you can like it, lump it, bump it, or jump it. I don't really give a rip. And these brothers know my wife, amen. I'm not a male chauvinist. I'm just a, a man in charge, amen. And uh, you don't like being in charge, that's your own business. You got like getting run around and dragged around uh, by these Kamala Harris piece of trash, uh, women in office and all this nonsense, you can go right ahead. I don't care, amen. Go ahead. We'll see you at the finish line, like That's my good right. brother says. We'll see you at the finish line and see where you come in. You All right, 2 Timothy. Woo! 2 Timothy. I'm not preaching on women, but I tell you what, there's some preachers that are neutered in this country all the way from my Baptist ranks, independent Baptists, some of the hardest pulpit preachers that you'll ever run into, and then obviously the street preachers, but there's a lot of things people don't want to touch and a lot of issues people don't want to deal with and a lot of things in the home that nobody will say in this pulpit all week long. But bless God, I say this book is an open book for every single one of us. And every letter in this book, every period in this book, every comma in this book is inspired by God and is profitable for our doctrine. Second Timothy chapter number 4. Uh, Second Timothy chapter number 4. I didn't say the independent Baptists were good street preachers, because they're not. They're cowards, just like a lot of other people. But anyways, they don't want to leave the four doors of the church. That's why I'm independent, and so I'm not associated with any particular... Anyway, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2. Let's look at it. You know this. Preach the Word. What is the Word? All the counsel of God. What is the Word? It's this King James Bible from cover to cover. Amen. You say, well, brother, i got to use this version. It's easier to read. You read whatever, bless God, you think you ought to. But I'm King James Bible from the top of my head down to the sole of my feet. I believe this is the only Word of God. And you can take your perversion, translation, your HIV, BET, MTV, bless God, whatever the you want to take, and you can use it however you want. Amen. All right. You say, well, I don't like that. Well, you'll get an opportunity to speak. Well, anyways, I just believe you ought to have a standard. You ought to have one or you take them all, buddy. There's either one or you take them all. Anyway, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2. Preach the word. That's the book that we hold in our hand today. Instant, instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So we understand that. The whole point and preference of being in season, out of season. You're sitting out here today. You could be in a nice air-conditioned building today. You could have the cocks shut their mouths, but it's not going to happen out here. Amen. Instant in season, out of season. Brother JK, hats off to you. You had to preach in the rain. Bless God, the sun came out on me. And uh, so anyways, I'm not better than him. I probably have less faith than him, and that's why God didn't test me with the rain, because I would have cussed everybody out and went and sat back down. Oh, boy. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. You'll be all right. I'm just playing. Some of you don't know me. You're looking at me like a deer in the headlight. You're looking at me like a calf at a new gate. I'm just messing around. These men know me. Trust me, they wouldn't let some Luke, uh, cuckoo up here today. But I tell you what, all of us in the sun and the rain getting soaking wet, we're pretty cuckoo out here today anyway. So anyway, all I got to say is, this is all the counsel of God, and, and we ought not separate it. I understand dispensation and all the grace and Jesus and all this. and uh, But listen, it not, ought not affect the message that you preach from cover to cover. If you're preaching in the beginning, God, or you're preaching the end in Revelation, it ought to be an open book, and it's profitable for the church. Amen. You say, well, what about the sinner? I say the Bible says these things were written for our examples. 
So there's a lot of examples in the scripture that we can use to be able to convince the sinner, be able to convince the wicked, be able to convince one another. Yeah. You know, we, we preach this book. The Bible says specifically, specifically, that he will accomplish what he sent his word to do. Right. Yeah. Amen. Brother Reuben gave the example earlier of the breast cancer woman. I've used those words as well. I've used a lot of other words. Yes, and yes. Uh, I say all that to say it's his word that's going to accomplish Amen. what he wants it to do. Right. You say, well, I didn't like that. And brother, you were a little too harsh on her. And brother, you shouldn't have said this. Well, God's going to accomplish what he's going to accomplish. He might have to take you to the woodshed afterwards and fix you up. But that's his business. It's not my business. I don't know the motive and intent of your heart. This God does. The Bible says that this word judges. It will judge the thoughts and intents that's of right. the heart. So God knows exactly where you are. He knows why you say what you say. And, and I get it. There's people that get off color. But I'm not getting upset about it. Paul said, look, there's some that are preaching Jesus Christ of contention. Did he get ticked off? Oh, I'm defriending you, brother. Oh, boy. Amen. Don't get me started on crybabies. Bless God. I can't stand it. There's some crybabies in this country. You, first time you tell them no, and they're all blowed out, and they want to get on the Internet and tell you you're a heretic, and they want to tell you you're full of sin, all this bunch of nonsense. Shut your mouth. Go get your own little flock to follow you and go do your own little thing over there. You and your low self-esteem, you got to have the group surrounding you or else you, ain't, you can't do anything. Listen, I don't have tolerance for babies. I got 20 employees. I can't stand a baby. I can't stand somebody that says, well, you know, I'm hurting today and, uh, and uh, we had a little too much to drink last night and I'm a little hungover. Uh, either handle your stuff or don't do it, amen? And, but anyways, you get in these street preacher movements and you got so many babies, spiritual babies, and they want to get offended at every little thing you say. I promise you one thing like our preacher used to tell us, if you came here to get offended, you're going to get offended. You're going to get offended. If that's why you came here. He used to say all the time, if you walked into church today with a chip on your shoulder, you're going to get it knocked off. That's just the way it goes. And i got to tell you that today, if you want to be offended with a brother or sister in the Lord, you're going to be offended. It's true. I don't want to be offended. Jesus said, they that love thy law, nothing shall offend them. I'm not offended. I'm not offended. Why? Because I don't go home with you. Like Brother Reuben said, let me spend a week with you and then I might be offended. I'm not offended at anything you do or say. Why? Because I don't go home with you. God knows you. God will judge your character. I'm not here to be offended. You want to preach the love of God? You want to hang a magnet? You want to hand out a track? You want to pray for people? I don't care. Do you. Do what God has told you to do. I'm going to preach all the counsel of God from cover to cover Every single time out, you say, well, they don't understand what you say. Well, God understands what I had to say. And if God's inspired me, God's going to accomplish with his word what he set it out to do. But if you want to be offended, you're going to be offended, church. And that's just the plain out truth of the matter. I appreciate the facilities, appreciate the accommodations, appreciate people getting together for the cause of Christ, appreciate the Word of God being magnified in what should ought to be magnified. It ought, the Bible says that He magnifies a, a Word above His name. You ought to pay attention to the Word of God this week. You ought to focus on the Word of God this week. Might get a little rainy, might get a little wet, might get a little cold, but you ought to focus on the things which are said from this pulpit. You say, well, brother, I got a Word. Well, obviously, God didn't necessarily pick you. I can sit down all weekend. That doesn't bother me. I have nothing good to say, I promise you. God might have a few things to do and to say that's his business. But I, I say today, enjoy your weekend. Be kind and courteous to one another. Don't try to change anybody because it's probably not going to happen. You got two days with these people. Let them be. Let, if you trust God, pray for them. Let them be. Get on down the road with God. You, you want to eat an herb by faith? You eat an herb. Bless God, I'm eating steak. 
ribeye with fat in it, and it's going to be medium well, and there's going to be red stuff dripping out. You want to eat a salad? That's your business. I'm eating steak, honey, that's and right. that's where I stand. And so anyways, thank you for the opportunity. Enjoy your week. Amen, Brother Josh. You know, we get told all the time when we're preaching out in the streets, <clears throat> just preach the gospel, brother. Our, our critics always say, just preach the gospel. Uh, most people don't even know what the gospel is. Most people will tell you John 3.16 is the gospel. Most people have no concept of what the gospel is. The Bible teaches in the book of Revelation... It uses the word everlasting gospel. It says, fear God. If fear is not part of your gospel, you've got the wrong gospel. That's the everlasting gospel. Again, our critics will tell us, brother, just preach scripture. Uh, they don't know the concept of preaching. You don't necessarily need to quote scripture, because if that's true, Jesus Christ failed. He quoted more, he used more parables than he did scripture. He's giving his audience something they can understand. And so when we go out there and we publish and preach the gospel, we're giving them something at their level. That's the concept of preaching. <laughs> And again, most people don't. Most people, I've seen them, they want to just quote Scripture. And they just stand there and thus saith the Lord, and they'll quote a verse and a verse. There's nothing there. There's no power in their words. The Apostle Paul, on Mars Hill, looked at all of the idolatry, and Paul didn't mention the first and the second commandment. As a matter of fact, you want to talk about preaching. Paul quoted from one of their own poets. He saw what one of their own people said to the unknown God. And that's how he preached. Not necessarily scripture. As a matter of fact, if the Holy Ghost is in you, those words coming out of your mouth are much inspired as Bible if you are really filled with the Holy Ghost. But don't ever think that preaching is just Bible. There's many examples of it. And like Josh mentioned, uh, preach the Word. Bible says preach the Word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Preach the Word gives us license to cover 66 books. You're not limited to just Jesus rose from the dead. If all I did is preach the gospel on the streets of America, Catholics will walk by, I believe the gospel. Right. Mormons will walk by, I believe the gospel. A J. Dubbers, seven-day Adventist will walk by, I believe Jesus rose from the dead. So, you know, we have to change things. The gospel is the remedy. And in my 40 plus years of preaching, I've only come across two people who've never heard Jesus rose from the dead. So don't think if you preach the gospel, a light bulb's going to go on and somebody's going to say, wow, I never heard that. One of them was in 1984 when the Olympics were in Los Angeles and we were out there preaching. Some Asian gal walked by and she said, wow. Is this true? This Jesus? And she started to weep. She cried out to God. And then she looked at people walking by and she was astonished. Why aren't they wanting to get into this Jesus? And so uh, uh, oftentimes we're told, brother, just preach the gospel. Uh, people have heard that Jesus rose from the dead. True. It's not like they're going to say, wow, I never knew that. Preach the word. Be instant. In season, out of season. We got that. In season, out of season. 
Well, I don't feel like going today, Lord. My stomach hurts. It's a good thing I don't live with you. I don't feel like going today, uh, Lord. I feel like I got a flu. You know, I had surgery on my shoulder. And within a day and a half, I was out there preaching with a sling. <coughs> In season, out of season, even when you don't think you should, you ought to be out there. Well, Lord, I, I just don't feel right. I've sinned. I said something. I don't feel worthy. I don't have a problem with that. My job when we go out is to quarterback some events. Okay, you don't feel worthy to go out and preach? Hold the sign. I can put a job for you. In season, out of season. Amen. Nothing wrong with just holding a sign. It's amazing. You hold a gospel sign, you're considered a lunatic. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yet people will work for a union, and their union will say, fellas, grab a sign, we're going on strike, and you're a hero. But you stand outside of an abortion clinic, Oh, you, you've gone way too far, brother. You, you're a fanatic. But you can stand out in front of a sign, with a sign, at the place that work, you worked for and paid you with a check, and you'd be considered a hero. Preach the gospel. That's, uh, there's more to just the gospel. Preach the word. That covers, a, that covers a lot of things when we get out there and preach. And so we're going to... Uh, um, end with uh, some lunch. After that, we're going to have Brother Jed, and we've got a couple more of the speakers, and we've got a couple other things that we're going to be doing uh, before uh, we break for dinner. So uh, what we've done is they're expecting some rain tonight, so we're going to put a canopy on the other side, and we're going to rearrange a few things. And we're going to need some guy power. So guys, if you... Uh, if you want to get out there and give us a hand, uh, we're going to need your, your body. And uh, Josh, Isidro, you're Mexican. We definitely need you guys. <laughs> That's, uh, I can say that. I'm a Mexican, so uh, I don't have a problem saying that. No racist here. Brown skin. But uh, some of these guys are going to be having lunch. The rest of you guys, uh, we may need your bodies to uh, put some stuff together and move some things around. Uh, and then you can always grab something to eat later on. So, uh, brother, I need you to stand up and uh, say, uh, say a prayer for the meal. And uh, we do ask.